the nine-day process building a Boeing 737 MAX. Let's begin our look at how our planes are made by taking a closer look at that nine-day process employed by Boeing manufacturing the 737 MAX. Not only is it a good insight into how one of the top airplane makers in the world operates, but it's also a great overview of what goes into each step in the process and how everything comes together as a whole. Day 1 to 3. The first three days of the airplane construction process do not typically include the wings at all, with crews instead focusing on assembling the fuselage. Boeing makes use of fuselages and passenger cabins that are made at its assembly plant in Wichita and then shipped for assembly in Seattle. This points to another key part of the airplane creation process, that it's very much a piecemeal operation. Different components of an aircraft such as a Boeing 737 are built in different locations and brought together for assembly later. Day 4. On Day 4, things finally start to take on a more plane-like shape as the wings and tail fin are added. It is of the utmost importance that they be attached with care and precision. Even the slightest deviation can lead to disastrous consequences. For that reason, those constructing planes typically use laser guidance technology or similar methods to make sure that the wings and tail are attached with pinpoint accuracy. In addition to the wings and tail fin, Day 4 is also when the landing gear is attached. Again, it is incredibly important that it be attached with the utmost precision. Day 5. By Day 5, the horizontal stabilizer is installed to help ensure that the plane is able to maintain balance in the air. This is also the start of one of the most persistent and important parts of the plane construction process, testing everything out. Prior to this point, most of the plane's wiring Electrical and mechanical systems have been centered around features including the onboard lighting and plumbing systems. Now, the wiring for onboard flight control is added and tested. This marks the transition from the previous, home building phase to the latter, more technical phase. At this point, the floorboards are fully installed, and elements such as the galleys and bathrooms to which those electrical and plumbing setups are to be connected are installed. Day 6. Day 6 marks another huge turning point. Electricity comes to the airplane, and it starts to become functional. This is when the really big tests start to occur, such as making sure that the on- These require their own miniature version of everything that has been discussed so far. They, too, have their shells and physical components built, and then have electricity and engineering materials added later. By the time they are formally attached to the plane, like the plane itself, they have come a long way. Once the two begin to be connected, still more tests are necessary. It is vital to ensure that the cables, tubes, wiring, and other components of the engine are connected properly. Fun tests begin. This means testing some of the most important components of the aircraft, such as the flight deck and the cockpit. The latter in particular is extremely complex, with modern flight computers being intricate systems that require a great deal of testing to ensure that they are working properly and are in optimal condition. As stated, testing occurs throughout the sequence, especially from day 5 on. By day 8, it is time to start testing different components together. Similar to a stage rehearsal before opening night at the theater, testing makes sure that everything is coming together perfectly. Day 9. Day 9 is the end of the line for the plane. This is the point at which the company purchasing the plane inspects it, tests it out themselves and, if they are pleased with how it has been made, take it from the factory to their fleet. It's a long process, and it's amazing that plane assembly teams are able to fit it all into nine days.
Aircraft maintenance is the performance of tasks required to ensure the continuing airworthiness of an aircraft or aircraft part, including overhaul, inspection, replacement, defect rectification, and the embodiment of modifications, compliance with airworthiness directives, and repair. The maintenance of aircraft is highly regulated in order to ensure safe and correct functioning during flight. In civil aviation, national regulations are coordinated under international standards established by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. The ICAO standards have to be implemented by local airworthiness authorities to regulate the maintenance tasks, personnel, and inspection system. Maintenance staff must be licensed for the tasks they carry out. Smaller business jet engines can cost in the region of $200K $300K each to overhaul. At the other end of the scale, modern large business jet engines can each cost between $1 million $3 million to overhaul. Turboprop engines tend to cost less to maintain than jet engines. The costs for turboprop engines overhaul in business aviation tends to range between $100K $300K each. Helicopter turboshaft engine maintenance costs are similar to turboprops. Operators can expect to pay $100K to $300K per engine per shop visit. often have brightly colored logos and designs on the outside. If you're wondering how they got there, it is really a lot simpler than you think. With minor differences, painting an airplane is much the same as painting any other object such as a house or a piece of wooden furniture. It just takes a little specific know-how in order to make it work. How are airplanes painted? Planes are normally painted every 7 to 10 years, and as you likely suspect, they have to be stripped of the old paint before any new paint can be applied. After the old color is stripped off, a prima is applied, then the paint itself. The process of painting an airplane can last from a few days to a few weeks. You may also need a base coat and slash or clear coat, depending on the type of paint that you use. Getting started. Stripping a plane of old color is an important part of the process because painting on top of existing paint can add weight to the plane, which no pilot wants. 
There are basically three layers used in painting an airplane, the primer, base coat, and the top coat, the latter of which gives the plane a shiny appearance. Many airplanes are painted by using a very thin layer of spray paint that is low pressure and high volume. After all, painting a plane with a regular paint brush would be too time consuming and costly. After the old paint is stripped off, the prima is applied, then the paint itself. The paint is usually a polyurethane paint. There are two main ways to strip paint off of an airplane. The first is by sanding the paint off but this is often a time-consuming process that can also harm the plane's surface if done incorrectly. The second way is to spray a solvent on the plane and let it naturally dissolve the existing paint. It accomplishes this in a mere 24 hours. Thin layers are a must when painting a plane because not only do they use less paint, but this also makes the plane lighter in the end as all paint layers add weight to an airplane. Most paint is chrome-free and easy to wash. Sometimes degreasing is required by using plain soap and water. There are two main types of paint used on airplanes, enamel and epoxy. Here are the main differences. Epoxy is a polyurethane paint that adheres well to airplane surfaces. It doesn't dry as hard as enamel. Therefore, it doesn't chip or become brittle over time. Epoxy has a high resistance to chemicals and doesn't fade, oxidize, or break down easily. Enamel offers two main advantages over epoxy. It is a lower cost option, and it is not as dangerous as epoxy because it doesn't give off certain gases when being sprayed. These two paints can also be used together. For instance, Often an enamel paint is used for the plane's design and color. Then the epoxy, or polyurethane, is applied for extra strength and shine. It is the perfect combination for both hardiness and beauty. One more thing. When car companies repaint automobiles, they cover certain parts of the vehicle with a thick paper-like material so that those areas aren't accidentally painted, parts such as headlights, windows, and so forth. The same is done with an airplane. If you ever want to watch a video of an airplane being painted, you can look it up on YouTube. It is quite interesting how the process is completed, and you might be surprised by how closely it resembles painting a vehicle or other item. Of course, airlines also hire experts to complete the painting job, so they have the right type of clothing and equipment and are familiar with the right steps to take to make sure the paint job looks amazing in the end. This is why not just anyone is allowed to paint an airplane. One of the most interesting aspects of painting an aircraft is that a spray paint is actually used instead of a regular paint that is applied by paintbrush or roller. The high volume, low pressure, or HVLP devices used to paint the plane are made specifically for these types of painting jobs. They allow for very even, thin layers of paint that both look great and aren't too heavy afterwards.